Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I got Dan the Man and his top five tennis rackets. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so you've heard me talk about my top five, my top rackets for this or that. I thought I'd bring in the Mad Tennis Scientist because we were talking about his favorite rackets. And I'm like, why don't you come on and we can talk about what you want, how you like it, and why top five. So, Dan, welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing your top five. I know you've tried literally everything I have plus more. So Dan, I guess you have a little short story to tell all of us first on your racket journey to being the mad scientist. Right. <laughs> sure. So I think it's important to put in context. First of all, I'm probably a strong intermediate player, depending on the day, sometimes a terrible intermediate, but um, I play uh, players that range anywhere from a 3-0 to a 5-0, so I, I tend to have a variety of rackets. But let's just start, I grew up as a junior playing with something like this, okay? So once you get used to this, it's very difficult to adapt to a modern racket, and that's part of the problem. So um, I quit for uh, for about a decade, and probably 25 years ago in the early mid 90s played with this which is a very control oriented precision head prestige 600 uh strung pretty tight with a with a synthetic gut so that that racket uh served me well for many years um very thin beam very control oriented racket um and then i uh, got out of the game for for probably another decade um I'm I'm a little yeah. like yeah, go ahead. I'm a little shocked because I haven't seen one of these in 20 years. Well, again, this was a very <laughs> old racket for me, and so I just put it in there as part of the journey to help people understand that maybe started with one of these. This is probably as close as you can get. But uh, you know, I tried to progress from there. Another decade later, uh, went for another head prestige. It's a little bigger, a little bulkier. Uh, you know, the, to this day, the the Babolat uh, Pure Drive is still a fantastic racket. You know, this is probably. 15 years ago now that I experimented with that. One of my favorite oldies is uh, the Wilson 4.3 Hyper Carbon, which is just, a, it's a 27 and a half inch, very light, very powerful racket. I actually won a serve contest with this. First one over 100 miles an hour in the box. So it's a lot of fun. Hard on your arm though. If you got any elbow issues, don't even touch that. Uh, still wasn't happy, so I, uh, then as you know, some of you know, I made my own racket out of carbon fiber, which is very labor intensive and, um, not really a, a practical thing for most people. This one's a little head heavy, but it's pretty. We made our own mono. Made our own mono, and uh, it actually works. Uh, strung it up, played with it. A um, little, little head heavy. So that's right, kind so of the journey. Let's take this. Get that out of the way. A little context. This here. Okay. So let's go. You said you had some honorable mentions Absolutely. before we get into the top five. Absolutely. So, um, you know, a, a, a really amazing racket. Probably not for everyone, but for an advanced player that can control the power of the Yonex Reina, this is a 98. Uh, and I actually strung this with uh, gut mains and uh, ALU Power Cross at, at 60 pounds. And this thing just absolutely catapults the ball. It's a wonderful feel. But A, it's unobtainable. Two, it's ridiculously expensive. So it really can't get into the top five, even if it was my favorite. Um, uh, but I put it in there to, as something to, you know, if you see one laying around in a garage sale, <laughs> buy it. Uh, another uh, really wonderful racket is the Babolat Pure Drive VS. It's got a little more feel than the standard uh, VS. Um, uh, it just has a little bit of a special feeling to it. I think VS must stand for very special. Uh, really nice racket. I strung this up with uh, some y -Trek, y Tech Quadro Twist, say that three times, at 46, and it plays very nice. Um, nice racket. Here was a real surprise for me. I was watching uh, Jack Draper play with uh, the Dunlop FX500. I thought, mm, that looks, you know, he's crushing the ball. Let me try one of those. And uh, this was a real surprise. It's not a fancy racket by any means, but uh, you get it strung right. And I, I hit some of the best sh shots I've ever seen in my life with this racket. Um, it's kind of hot and cold for me. Uh, some days I love it, some days I don't, but it's very, a very interesting racket. Um, one of the other rackets I was really pleasantly surprised with is the uh, 
uh, the technofiber, this is the 315. TF40. The 350. TF40. Yep. Uh, really a crisp, um, delicious feel, a uh, little, little bit like a bevel up pure strike with just maybe a little more feel to it. And when you hit the ball and you get it strung right, it, it feels like you're, you're snapping uh, a glass rod, a really crisp, nice feeling um, control racket and uh, something to talk about. Hmm. Finally, in the... Um, Honorable mention range, I, I love, I still, again, the head prestige, there it is. Uh, you know, you look at this racket, yeah, it looks kind of okay. You look at this thing in the sunlight, the carbon work, the paint, uh, it's a beautiful thin beam racket. It's got a lot of control, um, you know, for an advanced player that really wants something special. It was a good racket, probably not as much for a beginner intermediate, but uh, clearly um, a racket you pick up and, and say, wow, that's pretty cool. So those are the cool. honorable, oh, honorable mentions. mentions. Nice. Okay. So let's get into the nitty gritty, the right. top five. All right. So, you know, the problem here is which one do I love the most? And it's like saying, well, which of your children do you love the most? Um, it, it, it sort of depends on the day. And, and, you know, what's really important here is to understand strings. And so when I get into, you know, trying to find a racket that you love, um, the first thing is find a racket that you can swing. You know, mm. if it's too heavy, I think most people are using a racket that's too heavy. Um, it, it, and you know it, you feel it. You play a set and you can't lift your arm anymore, your racket's too heavy. So I found my sweet spot is about 295 to 305 grams, 98 to 100 square inch racket, that I can get a swing around it. And you know, just because a pro doesn't use it doesn't mean that it isn't going to work for us. So these rackets um, are rackets that are maneuverable, um, that are special. I can, I can crush the ball, I can touch the ball, and I don't actually have a favorite here. So let me just touch on them real quick. Um, probably one that's, a, again, a very special racket is the Babolat Strike VS. Um, I strung this up at 46, again, trying these uh, Y-Tex strings, Quadro Twist, and this thing absolutely launches the ball. Uh, and, and I think it had to do with these strings on this racket. Uh, I started off pretty much hitting them straight into the fence. I mean, it was unbelievable. So, you know, worked on the launch angle and get that down into the court. It's a pretty cool racket. Um, here's another one that uh, was, was a real surprise to me. Uh, it's it's a, a prior year model. It's the Radical MP. It's not the Pro, it's the MP. So it's a little lighter. And it's got a wonderful combination of power and control uh, and very maneuverable, surprisingly maneuverable. Uh, I think it might be a 300 or 305 gram weight. Um, and and, and I, can, I can really uh, crush the ball with this. Uh, and get it around, and my arm's not getting tired with it. So one of my top rackets. Um, this is the uh, the Babolat Arrow VS, and you notice my uh, <laughs> my my invention here, which is what I call the Oreo Hybrid String Jab, and I put it in this racket um, to try it. Who knows if it's going to work? It's a soft poly in the middle, a harder one on the outside, and this racket is just amazing. You get this thing in the sweet spot, and the pocketing on this thing, the control. Um, the power, it's delicious. I put this in on the bench with 10 other rackets and I was playing with a 5-0 player and he tried all my rackets. He picked one of those. He was using a pro staff and his arm hurt and uh, he picked that up and absolutely loved it. He bought one. I did that string job for him. So they're a really special racket, more of an advanced nice. uh, player's racket. Uh, the head gravity, you know, looks looks a little bit like a banjo, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, it plays amazingly well. I, I can do things with this racket I can't do with other rackets. I can actually hit an inside out serve to the backhand side and do a lefty slice with this racket just because it's so maneuverable. The power, the control, the pocketing on this thing uh, is really a lot of fun to play with. It's got to have the right string job. Uh, again, here's the, the Oreo hybrid, but uh, there's a lot of ways to, to string a racket to make it work. So that's the MP version of the Gravity. Guys. MP Gravity, absolutely. Yes. One, of my, one of my favorites. And here was another surprise. Huh. This is called the, the, the Prince uh, Twist Power. And this is their newer uh, 97 Tour version. And it's got this unique uh, twist in the beam here. Um, and and it's, it's just sort of an odd racket. You would think this is just some novelty that no one you know, would really take seriously. But a lot of people that test this and try it, they're, they're pleasantly surprised by it. It's just got a wonderful feel. It's got that, it's not so hard that it just feels like a rock. Uh, it plays extremely well. It's very maneuverable. Again, power control and uh, one of my favorite rackets, uh, easily. I know. Japan produced. Yeah. 
Japan is that produce? Uh, produce. So it's either either made out of vegetables or uh, it's made in Japan. We don't know, but um, it's it's a it's a really a fun racket. I think it's a, a little advanced um, uh, for for some people, but uh, I I just picked this up and was immediately um, crushing serves, uh, hitting great returns. Um, and so these are uh, these are my top five for now. It changes uh, probably daily, but uh, these are just some ideas. You know, my advice is find a racket that you can swing. If your arm hurts or you can't swing it, try a lighter racket. From there, if you don't like your racket, play with the strings, really. I, I can make almost any racket play great with the right setup of strings. You know, if it's too hard, try a multi-filament, an NRG2. Um, you know, I play with some of these polys, but they lose tension pretty quick. But, uh, you know, if you, if you understand that and recognize it, no big deal. So enjoy, have fun, and that's my, uh, my journey. Let's have some, let me have some questions sure. for you. Um, so you, on your favorite part, your power scale is probably a little tighter because you go from really flexible here, pretty flexible here, and then you're upping power into these three. But, yeah. but your power scale is, is kind of like low medium to medium here, in my opinion. Um, you're kind of between a, a three and a four and a half in my own scale, one to ten. Sure. So, so this gets tightened up um, quite a bit more. Whereas your honorable mentions have a wider scale here. Yeah. Um, I mean, the most powerful racket over there being the FX500. Very powerful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so, so it all depends on your swing style. You know, if, if you have a fast swing style, um, you know, and I, I, I do a variety of shots. So if I'm going with the slower swing style, um, you know, the power really isn't as, as important a factor uh, because you're not really using the racket anymore. You're mostly just using strings. When you really start to mm -hmm. crush the ball, then the power scale comes in. And these are the rackets that for me, for my swing speed, um, you know, which, which can be faster, you know, I'll, I'll use top spins. I like a, a hard flat shot. Um, these, these are the rackets that really respond to that, I feel the best. Right, right. Now, if you were going to play somebody 4-0 level, like right now, which racket are you picking? Right now, uh, I would probably start out right here. And then if I lose the first set, then I switch. <laughs> oh, I, to more control. I'd, I'd probably go here. Okay. Um, okay. But, but that's a tough call. You know, it, it could be any of these. And again, if I'm, if I'm winning, I stick with what I got. If something isn't working right, I usually make a change. Okay. Hey, that'll throw off the, your opponent because they'll wonder what the heck you're doing. Um, and it gives you a mental shift as well. You know, am I, you know, I've got rackets that are great rackets, but I'd, I'd string them wrong and I go out in the ball machine and just be dumping stuff in the net right and left. Right. And I thought, oh, it's just me. It's like, no, I pick up a different racket and all of a sudden everything's going in. And so depending if you're getting tired, you might be getting nervous, you might be getting tight, your swing speed's slowing down, your wrist is tightening up. Um, what racket is going to be most forgiving for those situations? Right. Not necessarily one of these, you know. In, in, in a real emergency, I'm two, three hours into it and I'm really tired, I'll pull out a Clash 2 Ultralight strung at about 40 pounds, so all I have to do is just touch the ball. I'm like, so tired, it's like all I can do. So, you know, it's, it's fun to have a couple different things in your bag. Um, <coughs> even if you have the same racket, you know, people have two or three of the same racket, have one strung a little tighter, have one strung a little looser, mm -hmm. and then you can move it around. I was playing the other day, it was 100 degrees out, I pulled out a couple of poly rackets and they just felt completely dead in the heat. Oh, and I really? couldn't figure it out. I'm like, this racket feels terrible. And yesterday it felt great. And I think it was super hot weather. So right. you never know. So so here's the thing. What, what Dan's talking about is uh, I think whenever you have a diff like different rackets and different choices in the bag, um, you kind of have to find what works that day. A lot of what works that day is you just concentrating too. If one's not working... Then if you pull something else out, then you're going to concentrate a little bit more to see if it'll work. So it's a combination of the racket and you paying attention, which is actually pretty important. Um, and then if that doesn't work, then you move on to the next thing. To which one of these will make you concentrate more? Like a different feel usually will make you concentrate more because it'll you'll have to adjust like swing path. Um, 
like uh, point of contact, you know, things like that that Dan's talking about, where you kind of have to adjust your game for that day, right? Would you? Yeah, and, and the other big thing is, you know, when your serve falls apart, your whole game falls apart. And some of these rackets serve much better than others. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I'm, if I'm having a bad day and the serve starts going down, right. I'll pull out one of these other rackets and all of a sudden, like this thing, man, I can just crush serves with this. And all of a sudden, I'm back in the game. You know, I don't have to do as much on the next point. I'm not double faulting on the first serve or, or faulting on the second. This is an incredible racket to serve with. Um, you know, and, and you can throw the second uh, serves in with a lot of spin uh, with, with a couple of these rackets. Probably the, these three, you know, are some of the best serving rackets I have. Um, and that can change the whole dynamic. Right. I'm okay. still miffed by this twisted racket. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> twisted. I'm, I like twisted. <laughs> All right. All right, so I want to thank my man Dan for sharing his top five with us today. Thank Thanks, you, my man. man. Thank Appreciate you for always being here with me. Thanks for inviting me. All right. Thank you. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Hey man, he, you can tell he been some, through some emotional damage. No man, <laughs> you look like you went through hell and back. You need some AP tennis, that's what you need. Hey, I, I have some emotional damage. Uh.